Dude, are you in there? Yeah. Okay. You're so graceful. Dude, oh. let's go to the Overland Expo. Where do you want these? Um, up top. My jump shot's not great. There's one. Oh, that works. Wow. Oops, sorry. Sorry, dude, I just, uh, it's, you know, we're in a hurry. Come on. Notice the tall guy's carrying the camera. Don't. Don't get any, mud, any dirt on my sleeping bag. Seriously, but how the hell am I supposed to put it up there? But if I don't get any mud on it. Oh, you dropped my jacket, dude. Oh, well, how did I know your jacket was in there? Oh, you didn't tell me. No, almost. Come on, jump, dude. Like a, I'm like not a jumping. Jump, jump shot. I don't jump on camera. Hi doggy, do you like Land Rovers? Yes? I have a question for you. What's important when it comes to off-roading? Well, many people might say it has to do with heritage, and we have a bunch of that today because we have Range Rover and Land Rover at our disposal. It was an amazing opportunity to drive these Land Rovers directly out of the Heritage Collection. It was a bit of an eye-opener, too. Shall we? We shall. All right. Now, many people consider this the quintessential off-roader. This is one of the best vehicles for approach, departure angles, breakover angle, and yet you were still able to hold up to six passengers, and you know, it, it had a, a utility level that, even by today's standards, is hard to, um, hard to imagine. Well, it's definitely form follows function, isn't it? And just a touch of brakes coming down. So it was a, a Buick engine, if you think in the 60s. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was put up for sale by GM, and, and we bought it. We got a lot of years out of it. A lot of years. A lot of years out of it. A lot of designations out of it. And we do not have locking differentials in the front or rear differential, and we don't have traction control. Traction control, you were traction control. I am traction control. Well done. So, the day you feel comfortable on a side tilt, don't do this anymore. This right. should always be a bit unnerving. Yeah, you should definitely feel like I feel right now, which yep. is why I'm, am I doing this? Yeah, why am I doing this? Why am I not on the flat part? But we're probably just shy of 30 degrees on that side tilt. We say these vehicles are designed upwards of 45 degrees side tilt, so we had a ways to go um, before there might be any trouble, but you never know. Yeah. Conditions change, the terrain changes, how much, how fast are you going, how much steering input is there. So we'll go through the articulation here, and here's where a benefit of the Defender 90, the 90 means it's a 90, roughly a 90 inch wheelbase. Right. It fits between these, right? So it, it's very maneuverable. Solid axles front and rear. Solid axles front and rear, coil sprung, about 10 and a half inches of wheel travel in the front, about a foot in the rear. That's kind of the magic of a Land Rover, a lot of wheel travel. Even if you look at the new stuff that's circling us, you'll see a lot of wheel travel. So that's what's getting us through here. And, and this really is, in many ways, the genesis for, you know, it represents, I think, the genesis for your brand. It really is. It is the template. You know, we're, we're not doing anything. The end result, the target, is the same. We mm -hmm. just found maybe some smarter ways to do it. This is a Range Rover Classic. This is a Land Rover Defender 90. And this is a Land Rover Discovery Series 2. We get to drive all three of these and compare where the vehicles have come from and where they're going to, because at the end of this, we're gonna have a bonus. Yeah, the Queen drives, or drove one of these. She's, She's a hardcore Land Rover fan. She drives a Defender. That's right, a Defender. So we're in low range, we're diff lock, we're set for off-road. Very different feel. 
right off the bat. Yeah. It doesn't feel quite as high, although still, once again, tiny pillars. Tiny pillars. Something right you just don't see anymore. No. So this was the car we first brought back to the United States, 1987. Um, and it was a hit. I mean, it was a grand slam. You know, it, it, it redefined the market. The only thing close at the time, as you mentioned earlier, was the Grand Wagoneer. That was the first thing that maybe had power windows in the, in the SUV world. Right. Um, and that was luxury at the time. Wow, power windows and, and, and power steering. Holy moly. All right, so this is a heavier vehicle than the one I just drove. Yep. But it has the same basic power and the same underpinnings. Probably a little bit, it's a little less horsepower and mm -hmm. a little more weight. So we've got the anti-formula. So but a little bit earlier, more acceleration. Right, so we're 1987 versus 1997, 10-year difference here. And let's bring that transmission back to first gear because now we have, hill des yep, you're there. There we go. We have hill descent control. Which is first gear. Which is first gear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Incredible how you could push a couple buttons nowadays, but back in the day you and just let her go, no brakes. No brakes, huh? Can you feel yeah. that engine braking? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Okay, so just hit it straight on and yeah, uh, let's just crawl through it. There's no speed. You know, we always go into it gently to see will it walk through or felt that rear end kick in. Yep. Steer to the left a bit. The other left. So you had it. Step, let's just step on the, let's back up just a little bit. Okay. That's fine right here. There you go. So we're just finding the lines out there, right? Right. We're the same. We're 10 plus inches of wheel travel in the front, over a foot in the rear. Different wheelbase. It's a little different geometry. And in a modern vehicle, it's going to move around and find that wheel that's actually got the traction that's and allow it to go forward. Exactly. What it what it's doing differently. So this does the same thing. This is looking for the wheel with the least traction. The mm -hmm. new cars do the same thing, but either the locking differential or the traction control or both with the brakes. Say, I'm not going to let this power be wasted by that spinning wheel. So cut it out. And we're basically lying right <laughs> to the drive line. Said, oh, that will simulate traction in that front right, even though it's airborne. Mm -hmm. Because this really did cater to everybody from your off-roader to the person who wanted a little bit of luxury around them. Nice appointments in the doors, some wood here and there. Yeah, I think it's got a very British feel to it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, it does. To be honest with you, I was a little nervous. <laughs> That's you should be. Yeah, that's. I'd be, I'd be nervous if you weren't nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that means there's something wrong over in the left seat. Right. Because you don't know. You should always be prepared for the worst. And if it doesn't happen, great. If it does happen, you're prepared. You're for prepared it. for it. Your body's locked. And, and if you're it. reacting to the worst, that's where we make mistakes. We turn the wrong way. We hit the gas rather than the brake, or vice versa. Right. So it's expecting every obstacle we come into. We say, well, what could go wrong here? What could happen? And how can I influence that? How can I make sure it doesn't? Cup holders for one thing. Cup holders yeah. the priority for the U.S. market. The U.S. market. Big cup holders. So welcome to a 2003 Discovery Series 2. So this 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 platform arrived in 1990. Uh -huh. Replaced the Discovery Series 1. The Series 1 came to the United States in 1994. I see. We okay. launched it globally in 1989. In the U.S. market, we waited by 1994. The key thing for us, we got the dual airbags. Mm -hmm. First SUV with dual airbags along with Range Rover um, in 1995 for Range Rover. In 2003, we moved Discovery to the 4.6 liter. So that's what you're in now, the 4.6 V8. The same underpinnings as the 3.5, the 3.9, the 4 liter. We had a 4.2 in the long wheelbase and then moved to the 4.6. So same construction, body on frame, uh -huh. as we were. Uh, neutral to go into... Yep, same routine, so it's the same transfer box. It's Straight just going to work your way between the cup holders. Priority, <laughs> straightforward. All right. Yep, and then over to the left will give us the diff lock. Yeah, it shows it right there. Which we brought back into this vehicle for this model year, 2003. Ah. It went away. We decided we would, in 99 through 2003, count completely on traction control. Mm -hmm. so you know what? That diff lock, we missed that, so we brought it back. This is the beginning of heavy technology. Yes. This is the beginning of using more than just mechanical 
gearing in order to make you a better off-roader, yep. basically. So we're kind of taking away your role a little bit as Mr. Traction Control. Right. We have four-wheel traction control in this vehicle. Yeah, and it has hill descent control, And it has too. hill descent control, so feel Which free I to engage. Which I think is one of the earlier examples of hill descent control, It too. is. So we, Land Rover, pioneered hill descent, hill descent control in uh, the Freelander. Uh -huh. And the idea behind that was Freelander was the first Land Rover we did without a low-range gearbox. That's right. And we said, so if we run a Defender down a hill, it goes at this speed. Mm -hmm. If we put a Freelander behind it, it's going to run into it. So how do we fix that? Well, we put in hill descent control. And there's one target threshold speed for hill descent control. Our current cars, you can adjust the speed. Yeah. So if it's, if it's inhibitive, maybe on a long, gradual, graded road, it might be too much. Right. So you can raise the target speed. There's one set speed at this point. So we're using the engine braking right. along with hill descent control. So the two work hand in hand. Double safety, basically. Double safety. Neither one has to work that hard. Right. Okay. And, and when you're ready, it's no 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 no, no feet on the brakes. And, and you'll hear a little chatter. That's the ABS That's kicking in. Checking the wheel rotation. Say, hey, all four are doing the same speed. That's a good thing. Uh -huh. Same as before? Same, and I bet we don't have to do a thing. Here we'll probably see traction control come into play as we come up over here. So nice and gentle. That's traction yep. control working for us. Which is, and we just point the car straight. That's all we have to do. So no, it's in, Nathan we, traction. Control. Nathan traction control, which creates a lot of dust. <laughs> it creates a lot of dust. A lot of wear and tear on the trail. A lot of wear and tear on the car. I think you see mostly in this Discovery Series too, is where we as a company said, okay, we got the off-road stuff in control. Let's make it a little more palatable on road. We used to talk about, you know, in the Defender, even in the Range Rover Classic, you pay a little bit of penalty on road for the off road capability that's built in. There has to be a trade off. There has to be a trade off. Well, we don't think there is a need for that anymore, and you're seeing that now. Let's put this traction control in, helps it off road. We know it's a, a benefit on road, so we're going to bring traction control to life. And we'll, so we're picking wheels off the ground. And it figures it out. And it figures it out. So yeah. it's, it's where we started to put refinement, you know, or, or we're better at the refinement. We learned a lot about on-road. We saw these vehicles replacing um, sedans. Mm -hmm. So we needed to put some sedan into it, but we couldn't sacrifice the off -road. Now we're coming to brand new territory because can you hear that? That's right, it's the three liter diesel. This isn't just a diesel. This vehicle has components that none of these other vehicles have. It also has high-tech off-road capability that once again, these vehicles don't have. However, as you've seen, you've seen the progression going from mechanical to electronic. And now we have this. This is such a different vehicle than everything else we've driven today. It has a three liter diesel engine. Correct. It does have mechanical components that help with off-roading, but it also has a lot of electronic components now it does. that aid with off-roading. So from the Heritage, it's the same concept. Uh -huh. Long travel suspension. We've gone from coil springs to air springs at mm -hmm. all four corners. Uh, it's permanent four-wheel drive, just as everything else we drove today. So what we've done to set this vehicle up, if we bring that Heritage for the Discovery Series 2, mm -hmm. had air suspension in the rear that we could manually select. That's right. And increase the ground clearance. We've got four corner air suspension, so the entire vehicle raises. We're in off-road mode right now. Uh, for the air suspension. What's the lift on this roughly? So from what we call access mode for mm -hmm. easy entry uh, to the top is about five inches okay. of, of range on there. So from standard mode, we're about an inch and a half above what you would drive on the highway with. Right. And an inch and a half is a mile off road. People spend thousands of dollars for a one oh, inch, two inch lift kit. Absolutely. Everything from spacers to a whole different suspension package. We use a button. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> nice. A... This one we have a, a center locking diff, uh -huh. uh, which is automatic. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything. Oh, so it does it all on its own? And a rear locking diff. It does it all. It will activate all terrain progress control. So that little light, and you'll see the icon change there to an orange. Mm -hmm. And if you trap the, tap the cruise control button, just while we're creeping along the set button. So just roll a little bit and give it one more tap. Stay away from the throttle completely. So it's doing it all for yeah, me. And you can all tap it down. That one's a little quick. So let's tap the minus sign. There we go. And why is it better than a driver and a throttle? As we talked about with the hill descent control, it's like having four brake pedals, so you have that much control. This is like having four brake pedals and four gas pedals. It can put power to the wheel that needs it, make sure we don't waste power on a wheel that may be off the ground or very slippery, and it just works around the car constantly looking for the best grip. 
Now, so far the ride has been impeccable. Um, very quiet. Very quiet. It's almost unnerving because I'm so used to hearing clatter and chatter on most off-road vehicles I drive. But at the same time, we're doing this off-roading with what are essentially slightly beefier street tires. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, as opposed to the other three vehicles where we, I think we're running old BFGs on them. On the, on the Defender, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Old Michelins on the, on the Range Rover and BFGs on the Discovery, yeah. It's incredible. So, I mean, it's the grip in this thing is tenacious, yet it is still running a tire that Yep. See, I mean, there was a little tiny slip, and it just figured it out. Watch the discovery. Yeah, the I'm watching. Side. Look at the front left wheel. Wow. It's turning at the same speed as the rear, but it's not even on the ground. So that's the traction control saying, yeah, there's no reason to put power to that wheel. Because it's airborne, right? Right. Now. So you're saving all the power to go to the other wheels. The ones that have grip. grip and move us around, yep. And if you just let off the throttle, she'll walk through on. I'm not touching the throttle. Perfect. A little bit to your left. Only slightly, slightly freaking out. <laughs> Good. And remember, we always need that. A little bit of freaking out. There's so much happening under the skin, right? Yeah. A lot of invisible technology. Uh, and all that's active on road as well. So if the conditions change from a dry road to a wet road to an icy road, the vehicle's doing the same thought process at the same um, same rate. So we really looked at technology in some ways that was going all the way back to about 1948 to absolutely. 2018. Yeah, absolutely. That's a hell of a Gap. Special thank you to Land Rover Range Rover for allowing us to drive these vehicles and of course the brand new Discovery. Go back to TFL Car for more news, views and real world reviews and more exciting off-road action. See you next time.